Um, awesome. So obviously, you know, Alex Wood pretty well. Um, extremely well. Extremely yeah. well. Uh, I guess first, just take me back to the first time you kind of met him and what your first impressions of him were. Well, he actually was a um, junior in high school, I want to say, and it might have been the fall. And he was starting to kind of come into his own and had a lot, of, you know, getting some confidence. And he just was uh, putting feelers out there. And for some reason, you know, I felt like uh, I kind of liked what, what he said in the email. He knew he wasn't there yet, but he felt like he was going to get where he needed to be to be a prospect. And um, so we got on him and went and saw him in that fall and – we were sold because uh, he had a uh, tremendous feel for a changeup. The fastball velocity quite wasn't, you know, what you were thinking from a 6'3 left-hander, but he was deceptive. He had that uh, different delivery, you know, some call it quirky or whatever, but it was, it was him and, uh, and it fit him and it created some, deception on his fastball and then like I said his change up at that time was was a ready pitch I mean he was really good with it he could throw it for strikes he could run it out of the zone and get swing and misses if we needed um so he, he was just a, a a perfect fit for us even though he was out of state we uh jumped on him basically uh like during before his junior year and kind of recruited him. And then as soon as that season was over, he came down and visited. And what did you think about that delivery? Was that something that you were like, all right, it works now, but I'm going to have to change that? Or what did you No, think? no, 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 no. That was never my style, man. Um, there's a uh, ton of ways to get it done. He got the good positions consistently in his delivery. And yeah, it was just arm swing. And, and like I said, I thought it worked. I thought it created some, some deception and uh, I was, it was definitely unique and uh, no, it's just something that I found through the years was extremely difficult to change because I think you were going to try and change his arm swing. And uh, I think every kid's got his, you know, they got their own unique, uh, way of doing it so it was something we didn't fool with we just kept you know we 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 tinkered some other things with grips and a breaking ball and uh, but we didn't really do much with um, didn't do anything with his change up and and he just knew he knew how to pitch he knew what he was doing he was advanced between his ears there's no question he was he was strong mentally and so obviously his time at Georgia is well documented and gets drafted. Did he pan out? Did he exceed expectations? Did, did he kind of do exactly what you thought he was going to do? Well, the, the, the one, the one story or scenario that he was great. I mean, let me start by saying that if I need, if we needed a big game, he was the guy. Um, but uh, I guess it was immediately after the state championship. I think he got very in high school. So he had, he had signed with us and we're, he's our number one recruit, basically left-handed. He's going to be in the mix to uh, help us on the weekends and SEC play. And we were extremely thrilled, but uh, I guess it was about two days after they won the state championship his senior year in high school he had to, he went in for a checkup and he had had to get Tommy John surgery. So he comes in and I'll never forget the father calling me uh, after, you know, when they got the news and he was going to have Tommy John and most likely miss the season, which, um, you know, ultimately he did. Uh, and so that, that hurt him because he basically only pitched two years for us. Uh, from from a standpoint of being one of the greatest pitchers in in Georgia baseball history, you know he he, he missed a whole year because of injury um, from probably overuse in high school 
well, or whatever the scenario was, but they were concerned that um, we were going to pull the scholarship. And um, I, it never crossed my mind. Because, you know, Alex was um, unique in the, in the sense that he was the ultimate team player. I mean, he, he was all, you know, it was all about team. When days he didn't pitch, I mean, he was more into the game than, uh, so, you know, coaches at time. I mean, he, he got it. And, um, you know, the, for that reason, I was, you know, we, he, he was as, a, as good as kid we ever signed from that standpoint. He, you know, when he wasn't pitching, it was nothing but the team. Now, when it was his day, when he was pitching, he went to a different place. And I like, I, I love that about him too. I mean, he was, cause he was a, a happy go lucky and, and good natured guy. But when he got that baseball in his hand and it was turn, his time to go, man, he was competitive. He was fierce. And um, from a coach's standpoint, he was, you know, it, 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 you felt good about not only the days he pitched, but having him in your dugout. Was there a moment at UGA that stuck out to you most with him? I just was every big game. I, I knew he had returned, you know, by that. He comes in his freshman year by the, by March of that year, the ball's coming out of his hand, like better than anybody we got right now, healthy. And, um, but uh, unfortunately we couldn't, you know, couldn't use them this year, that year. And, uh, so we waited to next year, and then when we got into the season, I knew we had a a, a little setback, um, but he never never complained, and and just kept basically by about the third game, uh, uh, third weekend series, we kind of we knew we, we tried to bring him along slow, but by that uh, SEC play, we we had to. Uh, he, he was our number one. And so we ended up throwing him on Friday night and, and probably the shining moment was um, we go his junior year, we go to UCLA and lo and behold, Garrett Cole, they have Garrett Cole who ends up being the number one pick and, and um, would, I mean, would outdo them. I mean, you now, what you call it when we talked to our kids the whole week or, or, or trying to prepare for them, you know, we were, you know, there was a couple of things we knew Cole was extremely dominant and we were going to have, you know, a tough time. Of course, Alex was matching them uh, for the most part. I think we gave up one. We might've been down to nothing. And Wood was, I mean, uh, Cole was uh, perfect. I mean, it, I think five and two thirds, and then we finally got someone on base. And then in the seventh inning, and we had talked about this, we said, you know, when we get our moment, we're going to have a moment. We can't miss it. And I think we went uh, hit. They misplayed a ball, and Kyle Farmer, who another big leaguer with the Reds, hits a home run off Cole. And um, Wood ends up getting that win. And that was kind of the, the, the first uh, weekend that he went in the number one hole. And because I knew we were, you know, it's going to be tough for us to try and match anybody else up against Garrett Cole. And uh, that, that was probably the moment where everyone kind of realized on a, on a national level that Alex Wood is, is a guy. Did you worry about his health moving forward? Because now knowing what we know, especially, you know, the past few years with the elbow and the back, did you worry about that coming to fruition in his major league career? Um, well, I, you know, it's hard to say for us, I didn't because he worked too hard. I mean, I saw him, you know, go through the Tommy John rehab and he would do, hundreds of just try deliveries. And I mean, you know, the focus and the be, the wherewithal to be able to do that type of stuff, I, I just knew. And, and I knew if, if 
he was, uh, uh, if he wasn't injured, he was going to take the ball and give us a, a, a good outing. Uh, you know, there's a difference between being hurting a little bit and being injured. And I knew that now, you know, from a pro and a longevity career, I'm certain, you know, I'm sure that the, you know, the, the delivery, you know, as awkward and different as it is may take its toll on his back and, and, but, but uh, he'll figure it out. That's what he does. He, he's uh he's the ultimate uh, survivor and just fierce competitor. And he's going to, he's going to find a way to give your team a chance to win. As you watch him now, and he's in the bullpen right now, and obviously he'd love to be back as a starter, but sometimes it's just how baseball works. What do you see his role as right now? And how could he get back to that starting role? Uh, you know, there's just so many, uh, everybody's in love with 95 and just the explosive arm. And, uh, you know, and I understand, I get that, but I, I still think there's, um, moments. I, I still think if, uh, you know, the, he's better in a starter's role. He just is. Cause he's going to out. Thank you. He's going to be extremely prepared. And, you know, that's one thing that you, you, you really can't do as a reliever. You don't know when you're coming. You don't know what the matchup is. You can have ideas, but it's not the same as starting. And I think what Woods, uh, just mental approach and the way he prepares, uh, you know, he's just going to be, he's going to contribute more, more to your team as a starter. And uh, unfortunately, he's not going to throw 98, uh, you know, 95, but I still think he can pitch it 91, 92. And like I said, I think his change up's a big boy pitch. And, um, you know, he's never had a, a tr- Great breaking ball, but it's definitely has gotten better in pro ball. And um, he's just going to, like I said, mentally, he's going to come in ultra prepared in a starter's role. He's going to know their hitters up and down that lineup and and just going to have a a great plan and an approach to getting these guys out and having success. And, And if he's, if he's got his, you know, if he's hitting his spots, he's going to be in the sixth, seventh inning, and you'll be right in the game. I mean, you know, you'll have your chances to win. I mean, he's just not going to, he's just not going to overpower you. And he's not going to be extremely sexy, and it's not going to be like what the guys look, a lot of them look like now, with just explosive stuff and put away uh, secondary pitches and fastballs they can run up the 100. So, you know, that's one thing, but I, I, you know, I'll say to this day that uh, there's, I haven't seen a whole lot of guys that were better than him in big games. You know, Garrett Cole on the road at South Carolina. I mean, it, you know, the, the one thing I, the only thing I ever worried about him was being uh, too emotionally attached and, and, you know, getting, I, I always just felt like that, high on emotion it was low on logic for a lot of guys and and uh so i only i only worried about him overthinking it almost to an extent instead of just trusting his stuff and 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 doing what he knows how to do just a couple more for you but um how often do you talk to him now and what what kind of conversations do you have with him well you know i just i I pump him up uh, I mean, when, when, when I get a chance, uh, you know, I, it, it's tough for me, the way the season fell this year with, uh, you know, we're full ball in the football and, and I haven't communicated much uh, late, but I, you know, got him in the summer and, and was uh, keeping in touch from that standpoint. And then, you know, he, he, his life changed, he's married and they got uh, things going, but uh my biggest thing and for all we've been with him is when, you know, he doesn't need me when things are going well, but I'm all, I'm going to be there for him when things get tough, because sometimes he needs to be reminded that he's a pretty special character. And, and I was very appreciative of all his efforts when 
but I had the opportunity to coach him at Georgia. Did you have to remind him that recently? No, I haven't from a standpoint I probably should going in. And, you know, he's the type of guy that, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, it frustrates him not getting the ball. I, I thought there was a, a outside chance against the Braves when Kershaw went with back spasms. I thought there was an outside chance that he may get the ball just because he had experience. He knew their lineup. And it might, you know, it might have been a good match for him. But uh, that not having happened, he he said he's just not the kind of kid to, to be selfish, I guess. I mean, he's in his second World Series in four years. And, I mean, you know, he's happy as can be. And he he's going he gonna to do what it takes to help the Dodgers win a World Series. Cool. I think you covered it all. Anything else that I didn't uh, touch on? Yeah, uh, he just, it, it, you know, if you talk to him, yeah, you you can tell him. I He knows I'm here. I'm always keeping an eye on him. It's just been a little tougher this year. But uh, special kids, special family. And um, I was uh, very blessed to have the opportunity to, to coach him.